find it unique that uh, the varietal that brought us together, Sangiovese, is not in your portfolio right now. And that, a Sauvignon Blanc. No, well, I, I am love making that a Sauvignon Blanc for you. Uh, well, we have your Sauvignon yeah, Blanc. Thank we're, you. We're kicking Thank it. you. We're kicking All right. it. Okay, um, what I'm getting at. Sorry is to interrupt. The, the man he took jabs at Cabernet is now Cabernet King. Uh, we are smoking it with Argus uh, Pinot Noir, and it's just about gone. And I want to know, are you gonna do a Sangiovese? Can we look at Sangiovese? And what's the what's the deal with Sangiovese and Pinot Noir? That's a great question. I my humble opinion is that Sangiovese and Pinot Noir are two of the most difficult grapes to make into wine, into good wine. How's that? They, you can make them into wine, but into good wine. Is it any good? Yeah, right. and um, there's so many ways to drink cab to uh, uh, screw them up. Uh, the clones, the area where they're planted, the um, everything in the vineyard is as much as I'd like to take most of the credit. I'd say 90% of it is in the vineyard. Then that 10% in the winery is huge. Um, so there's a lot of ways to screw it up after you've grown amazingly good grapes. Uh, but I do think that Sangiovese and Pinot Noir are very finicky grapes. They're very site-specific, and they really need a lot of TLC to bring them through to coax the so, most out of them. What's the key for you? Did you have a lot of sisters growing up? What gave you this delicate touch? Maybe it's the feminine things? side of me. I don't know. I just uh, I like those wines that have a little bit of a feminine character to them. I mean, anybody can grab a bottle and club you over sure. your head. But Pinot Noir and Sangiovese are two that can be elegant. Uh, one, they pair with so many different foods. It's it's amazing. Well, I um, alluded to our last video, the, the deer thumbprint, and yep. I'll expand on that and, and say that a lot of it has to do with texture, and that you allow a lot of texture to come through on your wines, and somehow it translates to the aromatics. Mm -hmm. and, um, and they're all very food friendly, whether we're looking at Cabernet, or Sangiovese, or Pinot Noir. But I would tell you, from the early days, tasting some of the early Benesri Pinots, um, I love what you do with Pinot. Um, what, do you, what do you got in store for me this year? What, what, can, what can our friend Frank bring have, to my doorstep? What do I have up my sleeve? Yeah, yeah. Not but, much tonight. Um, uh, we have a great block of Pinot. It's our vineyard. It's an estate vineyard down in Carnero. It's called Las Amigas. And it's a... It's a, it's a winemaker's vineyard. We have five clones planted on 10 acres. Wow. It's crazy. No one else would do this unless it was an experimental vineyard or it was a winemaker making wine for himself and to share with other people. That's what this vineyard is about. That's what I hope it will produce in the future. Well, so, that's so. what we're looking to bring is your wines from the vineyard to experience them over here in Florida. Thank you. Thanks. You're welcome. Cheers again. Cheers. Yeah, baby.